Hi, thanks for watching. I'm not into intros, so let's get started. This is how I edit pages. All right, we're going to start with some pieces of scans, raw scans. So what I'm doing here is I'm making them transparent and separating the panels, stacking them next to each other. Then we have to go in and do all this um, cleaning up. So I do my best to you know, obviously not spill stuff into my <laughs> bubbles, but uh, ink happens. So just going to be going around undoing my mistakes a bit. It helps that bubbles are mostly revealing the page color because then selecting all the bubbles becomes much easier later, which I'll show you. Yeah, I did a very minimal covering up of spills. I try to allow most of the spills to just demonstrate the, the fun sloppiness of the material. I think the mistakes often add charm to the illustrations. Oh yeah, so the borders. When, when I'm doing these borders here, uh, I also let them be a little rough. I try not to make them too perfect while doing corrections either because I'd like to yeah, preserve the, the character of the drawing. So if the border isn't perfect, if it's a little thinner in places or thicker, that's fine. Um, my main concern about editing them is just that they are dark, that they are almost perfect black. So the next step after I delete all the weird notes I have in the sidelines of the pages and get the the background of the page there it's a green in this in this chapter then I'll be going to create a copy of all the talk bubbles this is just a matter of selecting like I was saying before the the page color the white of the of the talk bubbles and then doing an expansion of about 14 pixels, which is about what um, a 300 DPI scan of my uh, border size that I keep pretty consistent will end up being. Uh, 13 to 15 pixels, more or less. If it's a little larger and it captures some of the color outside the talk bubbles, that's fine. I'll be going in and it, it actually adds a tiny bit of Oh yeah, so I'll get back to that point in a second, because right now I'm concentrating on just getting in here to uh, copy uh, what happened when I created that border so that I can line up the original artwork perfectly to the pixel. Yeah, so I just try not to edit the art too much so that I can do things like that as well. All right, that's back to normal. So as I was saying, uh, when I add contrast to the bubbles just there uh, you saw that happen hopefully I use a exposure in GIMP or sometimes I'll just use a plain old contrast and brightness but a combination of the two will yield good contrast of the lettering and the bubbles and those little pixels that I captured of the color if they get a little bold it actually adds a nice contrast to, it makes the bubble pop slightly. If the, if I don't get the full border of the bubbles, then that's fine as well. Um, because it, it just depends on the feel of the panel, the feel of the page and the mood of the page, what's, what's happening with the characters. I may make different calls depending on what's happening. Whether the bubbles are very, very subtly, very subtly uh, allowing more grays or subtle variants. It's just stuff that probably no one will notice except me, but that's just how I think about all these decisions. Here I am uh, using a median blur, which helps to make the text pop in places. So I'll add another layer, which is like a 50% opacity median blur, just to fill in some of the letters that got a little bit lost in the scan. And there we have it. So hopefully you can see the difference. The one on the left is the original raw artwork scan. The one on the right is the final edit.